coming up on the introductory edition of the Art Business Mornings. We're going to define the term art business. We're going to introduce the show and your host. We're going to talk about the five pillars of a six-figure year art business, and then we'll close with the mechanics of the show. So, Nick, how you doing? Inaugural Good episode. I'm excited. Good morning. Should we, should we get a get, get a coffee cup raise? Do it. A raise. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Cheers to the fancy intro. Oh. Mm. It's good. Top That's of the morning. Good. Top of the morning. Uh, so I wanted to start out by defining the art business, right? And this is sort of like a, a wifty statement. What's in it for me? Does it apply to me? And so really we think about the art business as, as sort of an umbrella, right? And, 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 and there's a lot underneath it. Stated another way, you might be in the art business if, right? If, if you're selling art or photography offline and online. It could be any combination of originals, limited editions, open editions, commissions, bellish prints, and or prints, okay? Uh, it can include selling digital courses on art or photography or crafts. It can include selling via art galleries, both retail and digital. Digital being Saatchi, Fine Art, um, art.com, those types. Uh, it can be selling art through fairs and shows, selling direct, selling art to commercial buyers and interior designers. Uh, does it also apply to sculpture, sculpture crafts, Jewelry, other art related products, yes, it does. Uh, but it also applies to hybrid based businesses and we see quite a few of those. Perhaps you're both selling fine art uh, and there's a service element to your business and it can be service photography of any stripe, portrait photogs or wedding photogs or you're doing sports photography, perhaps uh, AYSO photos, right? Or, or, or selling in-person workshops or teaching offline or on. Uh, perhaps you teach art and create art, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether you're a full-time artist or a side hustle matters not. Why? Success, okay? Success. We don't care where it comes from. And this is an important one because we get this question all the time, uh, especially as it pertains to how can we help you potentially grow that art business. And it's like, aren't you guys the print guys? Uh, you're the one that wants everyone to do prints? Absolutely not. Is that a part of our business? Yes, it is. But all we care about is success, where it comes from and in what format, in what percentages, it does not matter a blend of any type of art sales, a blend of digital courses, part-time part -time fine art. Why does it not matter at all? Why? Because if you've been an entrepreneur or a business owner for any length of time at all, you know things, namely how hard it is to get any single revenue source producing and doing well. <laughs> I mean, right? Nick? And once you get one working, you've got to double down on it. Oh, you double down, triple or down. You don't shift your focus onto something else. Exactly right. It, you have to appreciate how difficult it is out there. And then conversely, how much BS is there is out there telling you that that to switch or you need to be in this niche or that niche when you have one that's producing. So exactly. we're constantly reverse engineering success, uh, finding out what it is, backwinding it, breaking it down to its pieces and then reteaching it. And I did a massive deep dive, which is this is episode number one. It's introducing the show. Uh, episode number two is going to be a deep dive on the art business, but number three is success and how important success is. So we're about to have a huge one. Um, why would you want to listen to us, to, to Nick and I? What the heck do we know? Uh, one, experienced entrepreneurs. Uh, we've both been at this our entire lives. Uh, fun fact, we actually started our first business together. How did that one go? Huge failure, huge failure. But we learned a ton, sold over, I think, $600,000 in stuff uh, in clothing, actually, in our teens and early 20s. So. From there, it's just gone on and on. Nick started businesses that many millions in sales. I've started businesses, very low millions in sales, but still millions in sales. Uh, and we've been at this for a number of years. And it's not just the art business, it's business and entrepreneurism in general, which is just, it's such a missing component in this business. I mean, time in and time out, it's not just about marketing advice. Like, what would you say? It's almost like 80, 20, 20% 20 of the coaching that we're doing is just business related and business acumen, right? That's right. If you try to do it, all, if you try to do it all on your own, you will so soon learn that you're going to be in trouble. You cannot build a business on your own on an island by yourself. You know, you need to have people who have done it before um, in your business, in your industry who can help you. There's just there's no way around it. You're going to hit those walls. And a lot of people, they're stuck simply because of that. They're stuck on simple problems that have been easily solved by others. And uh, and and they could get over those if they surrounded themselves with some other people who are more experienced. Exactly right, exactly right. 
and it's not just business experience either. The majority of Nick's career has been in the art industry. He started one of the, the biggest manufacturers of media and, and breathing color in the industry. Uh, I've been in it for a good 10 years now. So it's not just the nuances of entrepreneurism and being in business. It's also focused on the art industry. You pile that on with data, okay? Data a couple of different ways. One, live sessions with both our customers and non-customers, of which we've had hundreds at this point. And it turns out that he who is closest to his or her customer or potential customers wins always. Pattern recognition is a real thing. When you couple the live sessions we've had with the over probably 100,000 phone calls that our staffs had uh, with artists and photographers out there, pattern recognition becomes a real thing. We know the ins and outs uh, uh, quite a bit about this particular business. It's, it, it goes even further than that, though. I mean, I think we're probably right about 4,000 customers now and counting over seven years. And so we're swimming data on what works and what doesn't. Not hyperbole, not something you heard from somebody or somebody wrote an article about something. Hardcore data that we see directly that's leading to sales and success. To sales and success. So that's my, why you might want to listen to us. Yeah, and I, I would also add to that just the fact that you know, one of the most historical biggest problems in, in the art business for individual photographers and artists is just going down the wrong path, right? Like you mentioned it in the, in the context of the five pillars. And if, if people correct their path, um, they instantly are going to be dramatically better than they were before, you know? And I think one of the biggest things that we can correct on this show is correcting the path up front. Because if you go down the wrong path from the start, right, you have the wrong business model. You know, you've got bad inputs coming in at you. Um, all of those different things, you're, you, you're already like dead on arrival. You know, you think you're going somewhere, but you're actually not. And this is why I always say that the starving artist problem, it's a millennia year old problem. It's a millennia old problem. How many problems are out there that are thousand year old uh, problems that still exist? I mean, isn't that just profound to talk about? It this is, is a serious, there's, this is a serious problem. That's what, you know, that's what the conclusion of that is. This is still a serious problem and, uh, and it needs to get solved. And in this industry in particular, in this industry in particular, there is a lot of BS, a lot of bad information, a lot of people that are going down the wrong path, following the wrong advice and all of that. And, uh, you know, I think that we can correct the vast majority of it. And, uh, and that's obviously one of our biggest goals. Our mission, you know, overall at art storefronts is to solve the starving artist problem, right? How do you do that? You create a lot more successful artists, right? You might say right now that out of everybody who attempts to create a successful art business or who has over the last, you know, hundred years, thousand years, maybe that percentage is really small. Let me just say like 0.01% or something like that. We're trying to take that to 10% or 20%. You know, does that completely solve the problem? No, but if we can get way more successful artists out there as individual solo entrepreneurs doing it on their own, that's a very big deal for this industry. It's a, it's a monumental shift. No question about it. And it, and it, and you know, we talk about the data, we talk about the live sessions, we talk about looking at our customer data and where we sort of emerged at is this concept of the five pillars. Okay. The five pillars that will essentially put you on a path, the tagline of the show put you on a path to a six figure a year plus art business. And I think we need to address the number up front and wh why six figures a year, right? One, we think it's a good target. And you know whether side hustle or not, it's a milestone that I think many want to hit. Yes, it's a big number. Yes, it's aspirational. Uh, yes, it might sound really, really far away from where you are currently if you're just getting started, but goals need to be aspirational. And what's, what's your line, Nick? You aim for the what? You land in the what? You, you aim for the stars, you land in the clouds. Exactly right. So that's what, that's what our goal is, and that's sort of where we are. And we think a large portion of the market is currently aspirationally at that. And so we think it's a good achievable goal, a good tagline for the show. Yeah, and we can't set it at 10,000. We've got to set it at 100,000. Even for those who still only want to sell 10,000 or 20,000 a year, we have to set it at 100,000 because we have to illuminate the entire path from zero to 100,000 plus. That's right. our goal. That's right. And, you know, better still, it's totally achievable. And never in the history of selling art has there been a better time to achieve this. The conditions are just better than they ever have been before. Why? Technology adoption being accelerated by the pandemic. The art industry, while perhaps a you know, bit late in comparison to its peers, music, video, delivery, taxis, et cetera, is on the fast track right now to disruption. 
what would have taken seven or eight years has now been condensed and as a result of the pandemic into this tiny little path. And so we think it's 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 a better time to get there than ever before. You have more power, less gatekeepers, and and there is a path. And if you're already at six figures a year, guess what? The plan doesn't change a whole lot. Okay. It turns out when you when things start getting a bit easier, absolutely, but you still need to work on your marketing. You still need to constantly be building your lead list and all of the things that we're going to cover in the show. So that gets me right into the five pillars. Okay. Number one, okay. The most important one comes to find out we've got to unclog the drain. Okay. That's going to be a huge portion of the show in the morning. Let me tell you what is unclog the drain, you know, mean. And as the analogy goes, like before we can even talk about the other four pillars, we have to understand the drain and, and what's stuck in your drain. Okay. What is it that we as plumbers are going to get out of your drain? It's all the self-limiting beliefs that both have prevented and continue to prevent artists and photographers from taking the next step in their careers. I talk about data on how many customers that we've talked to. This is part of the pattern recognition. And when you see it a thousand times, you realize how significant of a problem it is. And they come in many different shapes and sizes, okay? But they all have the same collective effect. Either the artist does not even start on the work they need to do, or they focus on complete nonsense and get nowhere. Hours turn into days, days to weeks, weeks to months, months to mirrors. You look back and oftentimes zero constructive forward progress in the business, right? Huge problem, huge problem. Huge problem. Any of these sound familiar? Uh, I would be doing great, but my media types are just unique or my pieces are too big or I I'm not narrowed down to a specific niche or I can just get started when I finish my website. How long have you been working on that website, by the way? Or or I don't know what my niche is, and until I do, I can't launch. Or, or my friends have been telling me my art or photography is good for years, but I've never tried to sell it. But I've, yeah, but I've never tried to sell it. Or I, I'll start doing great if I can just find that list of high net worth individuals. Do you guys have it? You have that list, Nick? Do you have that list? <laughs> I don't have that list. Oh my goodness, it doesn't exist. Anyway, forget the list. Forget the list. If any of those sound familiar, trust me, we're hearing these all the time. And these are things that are stuck in your drain that are preventing you from taking your next step. So we're going to unclog that drain. I've got the snake. I've got the big truck out there. Don't worry. We know how to get these things out of the drain. Pillar number one. Pillar number two, understanding the business model. Okay. Stated another way, DTC or die. Nick, Most what does DTC mean? What does DTC mean? Direct to consumer direct to consumer. And for far too long, there have been too many middlemen involved in the art sales process. Doesn't matter wh where you rank in that art business. Uh, galleries, online galleries, you're not getting your customer information. You're not selling direct, you're selling indirect. There's all these additional costs built in that are absolutely killing your business, uh, uh, contributing to the starving artist problem, and they need to be obliterated. It's quite literally DTC or die. So we're going to go into massive deep dives on this one, but the business model you know, if, if we've learned anything, you've been an entrepreneur for any length of time, you would have thought like, this is common knowledge. Everybody knows this, but we've come to find out you don't. There's just these normal paradigms of the art business. You're going to give up 50% of your sales and not keep your customer list to art galleries because that's the way it goes. And that's where the prestige is. And it's just Listen to this, guys. Mad DTC or die. There's a reason that this one's number two on the pillar list. Okay. You get this one wrong. You get this one wrong, you are pretty much sure to have a starving artist business. I can tell you that. And the other thing too, is that it's not just the galleries that are the, you know, the indirect, right? Versus the direct. The yeah, art shows sure. have proven to be, you know, to have their own indirect component that can pulled out for, get pulled out from underneath you as well, right? How many art shows are going on right now, Pat? Yep, not a whole None. lot. How many are coming back? We don't know. How many people are gonna go to them? You know, so anything that relies on a third party is indirect. And that is a very big risk. It always gets pulled out from underneath you at some point. And that's why direct to consumer DTC, where you market direct, you own your customer list, you own everything, you make the most money from your work is an absolute must, okay? And it's the only way that you get consistent income. You wanna know why most artists have not had consistent income or why if you've been at it for five or 10 years, you haven't either. It's because you've never focused on building a DTC business a direct business. You've likely been, been reliant upon indirect sources like galleries, publishers, art dealers, and art shows. We talk about the path to 100K year business. What are the odds 
of an artist making it, period, okay? Getting there. Not great. Not great to begin with. It's the nature of this business. What are the odds when you are not a DTC business? You might as, you, you might as well play the lotto. You might yep. as well play the lotto because that's how low it is. That's how hard it is. So that's understanding the business model. We're going to go into that in, in, in insane detail. Number three, my wheelhouse, my favorite, the secret to effective marketing. It's taken me my entire career to figure this out, okay? Many, many of you heard me rant on this before. I can't believe I'm going to tell you the secret. They told me not to tell you the secret. I'm telling you the secret. There is no damn secret. There's never been a secret. It's two things. One, focusing your limited time and energy that we all have on the high ROI, return on investment of your time, your treasure, marketing activities, okay? Again, we have a ton of data. We know what these are. We know what are driving sales and creating success in artist businesses. We're going to be talking about those. Once you figure that out, once you focus on those, it's just a game of consistency. That's it. That's it. And it's the two biggest problems as we talk about marketing. One, artists chase the shiny objects. They don't do the high ROI stuff. Then they quit after a little while because it turns out the shiny objects never work. Focus on the high ROI. Do it consistently. That's the secret. You win. There is no secret. And, and you know you know what else? The other thing is that is so important to emphasize there when we're talking about marketing is if you don't solve the marketing problem, you don't have a business. Just because you have a website and you threw your images up there doesn't mean you have a business, okay? The right. number one problem that every artist and photographer has to solve is marketing, okay? That's the real problem behind the problem, okay? A website is not enough. A website is something that you should launch you know, and put your images up from time to time as you create new ones. But other than that, 99% of your admin or business time should be spent on marketing. You have to solve the marketing problem. Otherwise, you will never have eyeballs, you know, on your art. Um, you won't have traffic coming to your site and you won't have people on your email list and you will not grow your sales. You right. have to solve the marketing problem. It's the number one problem. That's right. So we're gonna be we're gonna be deep diving on that, obviously, a ton. We've we've come to known for for our marketing acumen, if you will. So there's gonna be a tremendous amount of content about marketing on the show. Clearly, uh, number four are what we like to call the inputs. And I saw someone had left a comment on 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 the live stream already about this one. But why don't you start with our favorite quote, and then I'll talk about the nonsense. Yeah, you are the average of the five closest people you surround yourself with. And I and I like to apply that not only in your personal life but in your business life, in so, your business life as well. Yeah, if you're not, if you're not around people, and, th and this also goes like when we say the inputs, it's, it's a combination of that quote. And a lot of people get intimidated by that. Well, I live in middle America and I, you know, there's not good in, you, you don't need to be physically next to these people, okay? It's where you're getting your information from, really at the end of the day. And, and the inputs like time and time and time again, we get these questions from artists, from photographers, and it's, nonsensical statements and they're convinced of them and we always ask them who in the world told you that who who told where you did, where did you get this information because i already know it's from someone that's never sold anything in their entire lives and yet it's somehow gospel in your mind i don't even know how it happens but it's infuriating it's infuriating so you need you need to mind your inputs you need to have some good ones you know you could say like the tagline for this show is to put you on the path for 100K year art business. It's also to give you an input you can trust, okay? It's to give you an input that is actually going to feed you with narratives that have success underlying them. And without it, the negativity gets in there. Call them the haters, call them misery loves company, call it whatever you want. It's misinformation, fake news. It's all one and the same. If you don't have inputs from people that are actually selling and being successful, in the art business, then it's bringing you down. And we got to get rid of those. We got to get rid of them. And here's a perfect one. So I'm, I'm bringing up that comment you mentioned. David yeah. says, what do you do if you're if the ones in your business sort of hate on what you are doing? Uh, the only mentors, mentors I really have is you guys, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's a perfect example. How many of you are out there and you've got inputs coming at, at you that are negative, that are wrong information? Audit your own inputs and you need to separate yourself from those in some way or another. Okay, in some way or another, and you need to surround yourself with higher quality people, right? So you need to find other artists and photographers who are well above your level that have the sales to prove it, right? And create a little group of mentorship that you can lean on to help you make better decisions every day in what you're doing. Yep, make better decisions, encourage you, and most importantly, 
to ensure that it's not nonsense because we've just seen entirely too much of it. Yep, you know, got to no control your inputs. We'll get some. We'll get some no nonsense uh, bumper stickers. Go go with the coffee. Are you get no nonsense on the couch? Maybe. Um, that's pillar number four. And again, we are going to be doing deep dives with this show on all of the pillars, and we'll constantly be referencing back to them. They really are fundamental. And and number five is equally important as all the rest. Perspective. Okay. Perspective on how long it takes. If our aspirational goal is a is a is a six figure plus a year art business, that is not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in three months. You can't do six hours of marketing and say I didn't sell anything. This is a joke. It takes time. It takes time. I always give the analogy when you're driving. Okay, when you have a destination in mind, it doesn't matter if that drive is two hours, ten hours, thirty hours. Towards the tail end of it, you start getting antsy. You start getting anxious. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And if in your mind, you're going for a two hour drive instead of a three year drive, you're going to lose. You're not going to market consistently. You're not going to work on the business consistently. So you need to have the perspective of how long it's going to take to build that successful art business. And it does not happen overnight. I mean, one of the things that we say or that we, we, we steal, and I can't, I cannot, I, I know I heard him say it, but I can never find the doggone quote on the internet, but it's, it's Steve Jobs line. And he says, it takes three to five years to build anything of value. That's just to build the thing of value, not even grow the crap out of the business, just build a thing of value. But it's like years three to five, uh, year seven to nine is when things really start moving, yet no one starts with that length of time in their mind, right? In terms of a perspective. So really, really important one too. Another so one that we're gonna have to cover a ton, a ton. And, and these then, are the things right here, like you get that one wrong, you get the pillar number four wrong, you get any of these wrong, you're pretty much done already. Yeah. I mean, you might have the greatest art in the world. You might actually have like early success happening, but because your expectations are wrong, you're all bent out of shape about it. You think you're doing bad. And then you get demotivated and you quit and yep. you're done. And you actually had a business going on the right track all because you had the wrong perspective, right? From the wrong information. Yep. And we see it all, see it all the, the time. time, all the time. Um, so those are the five pillars. We're going to be covering them a ton. Um, the show topics are, are literally going to range all over the all over the place. And I made a list because I wanted to, I wanted, this is like kind of what we have as an initial list just to get it started. But we're going to be talking about just ship it. We're going to be talking about eating your own dog food, what that looks like. We're going to be talking about merchandising. God, I get fired up on the merchandise. Oh, the merchandise. No one does a good job on it. Uh, we're going to be talking about success and what going all in on it looks like. Uh, we're going to be talking about shiny objects syndrome. Okay. Like the movie up squirrel, the dog, high ROI marketing activities. We're going to define those, break those down. Uh, art business longevity, and I don't mean about print longevity. I mean, you could be selling in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and then potentially pass a business on uh, if you finally want to retire in your 90s. It's a totally unique business in this nature that you can just keep building it and building it and building it. We're going to be talking about being close to your customer, hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, how important that is, how we define it. Uh, virtual art shows uh, uh, from the local shows and fairs. This is a hilarious con. We'll get into that one. Uh, we're going to be talking about video chatting, okay? The acceleration of tech adoption. And I have some insane quotes on that one. You're talking about small wins, how you stack those to big wins. Defining your niche. Yes, we know that's a hot button. Validating your mark, your art, right? Like, does the market want it? So important. When to pivot if the market doesn't. Uh, live art shows, of course, that's a red and butter. Uh, never comparing your beginning to others, middle or end. Uh, and only the market can tell you. We, we, we've got so many topics about to come up. It's, it's literally going to be out of control. And we're going to do it all over our favorite morning beverage, right? Oh, oh. So grab yours. Get a little sip. Mm, mm. It's a good segue to the show mechanics, okay? Currently, we plan on streaming the show live twice weekly. We're still working that out. Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central, um, 12 p.m. EST. It can't be morning for every time zone. We did our best. Um, how can you make sure you never miss an episode, you ask? Well, first, thanks for asking that. Okay, I appreciate it. Second, you can get all of the episodes via email. Uh, so a great way to do that is going to be get onto the email list. There'll always be links in the description wherever you see it. Um, if you're an arts reference customer already, you'll obviously get bombarded with them regardless. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, you can watch it live on the socials. We're streaming on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, if you subscribe to the podcast, uh, the Art Marketing Podcast, you can search that anywhere you find podcasts. Uh, we're going to be dropping them on that feed as well. And as always, uh, we're going to be answering questions live as we go. And 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 that's the show intro. And I'm I'm really fired up about it. I'm Me fired too. Up. I can't, 
Can't wait. This is going to be so much fun. So I got to I got to play the outro music. Still working on the mechanics. But on that note, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for having some coffee with us. Hope to see you soon. And have a great day.